Alright Dad, what game are we playing today? Today we are playing New York 1901. We're building up uh, skyscrapers in New York City. This is by Blue Orange Games. Uh, mostly known for a lot of light family games. We really like spotted as one of our favorite Blue Orange games. But this is them jumping into some strategy games. It's a light strategy game. I think it's fantastic for families. And if you take a quick look around, you'll see it may seem a little intimidating because we got a lot of stuff spread out on the board. But not to fear, it's really rather simple. There's only uh, essentially two things you can do on your turn. So most of it's just plotting and planning from there. But uh, it's a good game. Uh, and I recommend it, and you'll see why. Well, excellent. Let's see how to play. All right. So, to get started, everybody randomly takes a player card. This doesn't equate to the color you are in the game, but essentially it tells you, it shows you a symbol of where you're going to start. So, he starts here on blue. I will put my little starting building on those two spots. I will take that card, and then I will also take three special action cards for the yellow player, which I'll explain these in a minute, so I'll bring those over. So the other thing you do to start the game is you'll take these street cards and you'll randomly select three of them. So let's take three. And these are going to show you bonus points at the end of the game based off of whoever has built the most skyscrapers along those streets, which we'll get to in a minute. So those are good to keep in mind. The other thing you'll get is there's a set of bonus cards where you select one at random And that will tell you another way that you're going to score points at the end of the game. This is bonus points. And each of those are going to be different. Different ways of scoring points. So there's a lot of variety and replayability in the game because of those different bonus cards. So now I know these are the things that I'm going to be competing for as well as standard points from my skyscraper tiles. And with that, I'll show you how you dive into the game. Alright, so on your turn, you get to do a couple of things. You can either acquire lots and build, or you can demolish some of your buildings and rebuild. And I'll show you how to do each of those. So, the first thing to do is acquire lots and build. Over here, we have the open market and the futures market. Here it tells what lots are available. So I could go ahead and, for example, take this lot, which says, okay, a blue in the blue district, I've got a lot of two. So I can keep that on my card and then I would place a worker in one of those spots. So you can see here your basic grids of these two by squares. There's a little dotted line in between. So let's say I want to keep building where I was. I'll put my worker and I've reserved that lot essentially. And I keep that on my, on my card. When I acquire a lot, I could also build there if I want. So I could take one of my buildings over here, my two building, and swap out my worker and place my skyscraper there. And I immediately score two points move myself two points on the track. Now over here what you'll see is the type of buildings you can build. I've got them in three different piles because we have bronze, silver, and gold type buildings. You can see down here the numbers of points you're going to score for building that building and you've got the different colors. Which is easy to set aside because one of the things you can do on your turn, that was one option, was to acquire lots and build. The other is to demolish and rebuild. And when you're demolishing and rebuilding you're taking off buildings and you're putting a, a building of a higher generation on top of that. So for example, let's say I had a worker out there from a previous turn and now I want to demolish and rebuild. So I can take any of these lots, since these are bronze, I could take these off and let's say I'm going to build me that building. I don't have to fill all the spots, I still have those or part of my lots. But I now built a silver building and I'm going to get six points. But wait, you say, I would already pulled off a building of two. I don't lose those points when I demolish. I still got those points. They don't get lost. I just add six more points. However, there's a catch. You can't start building silver buildings until you reach this point. And you can't start building gold buildings until you reach this point in the game. So it shows that you're going to have to build more out there before you get your total six points, before you can start building a silver building. But that's how you demolish and rebuild. So again, on your turn, you could either do the lots and build or destroy and rebuild. Now, in addition to what you can do on your turn from your just your standard actions, you can use your special actions. These are one-time use cards that everybody gets, and I'll tell you what they do. For example, this one here 
lets you acquire a second lot. So if I had acquired a lot card, say I had taken green, and I'd place my worker on a green spot, I could then go ahead and take a second lot card. I'll play this card, it's out of the game. I'll take this yellow card, and with this you can see it's a three squared item, and those are designated also by flower, so maybe now I will claim this three corner spot. And I can do that with that special card. What this card lets me do is it lets me build an extra building. On your turn, when you acquire a lot, you can go ahead and build a building, but you can only do one of those. If I played this card, then I could build a second building and get that done there. And now I've scored five points on that turn, and then I'm cruising. This last one is if I didn't like any of the cards that were in the open market, I could clear all four of those out and put four new lots up for sale out there. So that's what those special cards are. If you don't use your special action cards, at the end of the game, each one is worth one point. But as you can see, by playing them, you can get a lot more than one point on your turn. So I think it's a good thing to use your action cards. Over here, you can see there's some tiles that aren't yellow, green, red, or blue. These are legendary buildings, and they are gold buildings. So they can be built straight out once you're able to build gold buildings, or you can demolish something and build them. Each player can only build one of those during the course of the game. It's not required to build one, but you can build one. So for example, I like to eye this bigger point, and over here, where I demolished and rebuilt earlier, I also was able to acquire a red lot next to it. So on my turn, instead of drawing a lot and placing one out there, I'm going to demolish this silver building for a gold building, take off my spot, and now I have claimed a legendary building, and to show that it's mine, I put my king token on it. So then I'm going to get those 12 points and move ahead. So that's what you can do with the legendary buildings and move up. And it continues back and forth like that. Everybody trying to vie for their spots, trying to get some areas where they could demolish and, and rebuild, trying to figure out where lots are already taken. This one's pretty varied in what's gone there. So a lot of back and forth strategy thinking through that. The game will end uh, in one of two ways. Either when one player gets down to their last four skyscrapers, so if all of these have been played out, and I just built a building that brought me down to four, I triggered the end of the game so everybody else will get one more turn. Or the other way is if the last lot card is taken and there's not any other lot cards to fill up, then that's going to trigger the last round of the game. So when we're down to three and you can't refill the, the open market, that'll trigger the end of the game and everybody else gets one more, one more turn. And then you'll start looking at where everybody else is on the board and score up final points by looking at these streets. So for example, let's look at Wall Street. On Wall Street here, which color has built the most buildings? Well, yellow has four buildings on there. Red's only got two touching Wall Street and blue only two. So yellow, I'm gonna get five extra points for having the most buildings on Wall Street. You do the same thing for Cedar. On Cedar, it looks like green has four buildings and red's got three and then you score up whatever bonus points you get from that. Whoever's in the lead wins the game. So what would you rate this game? I would rate New York 1901 a four. Again, very solid family game. It's one that I'm interested in playing uh, multiple times just because of the variety. It's, it's puzzle-like, I like the Tetris pieces, and I like to think through those type of items and, and vying for spots. So big thumbs up for me. Well, all right. Thanks a lot, Dad. You bet.